Worlds is finally here, and we've already had some really exciting games happen just in the play-in stages. I've gotta say, the play-in stages have to be one of my favorite stages of Worlds, where people just throw out some crazy comps, break the meta, and all around, they're very fun to watch. Now, this should go without saying, but there are going to be spoilers for the Unicorns of Love vs. Clutch Gaming Group's play-in stage game. If you do not want the outcome of that game spoiled and you haven't watched it yet, make sure to go watch it first before coming back so we can break it down together. Now if you haven't already, make sure to check out our website, GameLeap.com. Our website is one of the best learning tools out there for improvement. There we have hundreds of guides, all done by challenger players, sorted into a quick and easy to use courses system. We have courses both on the five fundamental roles as well as champion specific courses, so if that is something that interests you, make sure to check it out using the link in the description below. Now with all this being said, let's take a look at how Clutch blundered their way all the way from champion select through the last minutes of the game. Now obviously the game starts with champion select, but Clutch's first mistake is the very first champion locked in for 2019 Worlds. That's right, I'm talking about Renekton, the champion that I'm so well known for, I have so much experience on, and they lock this champion in blind. You guys have no idea how much it pains me to see this happen. They could have easily learned from SKT if they wanted to use this strategy. SKT did it so well, but instead they just blindly lock in Renekton. Oh, it is so painful to see. This is not a champion that you blind pick. This is already a huge mistake by Clutch's coaching staff. This is compounded by the fact that they were using Renekton as a flex pick this game. If you're going to flex pick with Renekton and Akali, then you need to be picking Akali first. This is honestly such a novice mistake. When you're blue side, you don't pick something that's easily counterpicked, you try and get a high priority pick. The second rule of blue side's early draft is you want to pick a good duo in your second pick. This is either your ADC and your support, or your jungle in one of your solo lanes. Now this isn't what you always do, sometimes you do respond to whatever red side drafts in their first two picks, but most of the time you're going to be looking to secure a strong duo. Now Clutch's blunder isn't so large that they mess it up here by drafting Renekton, Akali, and Echo as their first three picks. If they had done that, I might have just lost it. What Clutch should have done here? is they should have first picked Akali and then taken Zaya and Rakan. This allows you to have a safe laner. Akali is very, very safe and a safe bot lane as well. This means your first three picks are very safe. This makes it very hard for Unicorns of Love to instantly draft a counter pick. When Clutch first picks Renekton, this allows Unicorns to lock in Nico with absolutely no consequences. On top of Nico being a hard counter to Renekton, it can be flexed to pretty much any role except for jungle. Now the second phase bans by Clutch are actually not awful, but they could definitely be improved on. You know that the enemy team needs to draft some sort of physical damage, typically a marksman. Because they see Nico is already locked in, they should know that unicorns have played this as an ADC pick before, which means they should be prioritizing banning out ADCs that can be flexed to the mid or top lane. Tristana should not make it through the second ban phase. This is a huge mistake by Clutch. They just didn't do their homework. If they did intend to spend their bans on ADCs, Tristana definitely should have been banned. Unicorns yet again do a fantastic job of responding to Clutch's mistake. They instantly lock in Heimerdinger, another pick that can be flexed to the ADC position. At this point, Clutch is forced to pick their last two picks and they lose all priority that they ever had in this draft. Unicorns lock in Tristana, which really rounds out their comp, giving it some ranged physical damage. And again, like I said before, this is something they can flex into any lane. After seeing all the champions locked in, Clutch decides to flex the Renekton into the mid lane against Tristana. Now, this is also not a favorable matchup for Renekton. This is again a huge mistake by Clutch. You don't put Renekton mid here because you don't have a jungler that can camp him. Unicorns did a beautiful job with the second ban phase, taking Elise off the table, knowing that Elise Renekton is a very potent duo. Renekton Echo is already not a good jungle mid duo, and on top of that, you're going to be playing into Tristana, which means that you're not going to be able to lock her in CC, she's just going to rocket jump away. I'd say about 95% of this game is on the coaching staff for messing up the pick band phase so bad. The next mistake is by Demonte at level 1, who skills the wrong ability at level 1. 
he takes Q, you're supposed to take E. This is pro play, so he isn't going to be punished nearly as much as he would in solo Q, but you still want to be taking E because it'll allow you to trade at level one while still getting all of the CS. Also opens you up to a level two all in, something that you just cannot have while taking Q level one. This among other things shows DeMonte's lack of experience on Renekton, and it shows that he's not comfortable with the pick, meaning they shouldn't be trying to flex it anyways. An even bigger mistake than this, however, is the Unicorn's bot lane walking up at level 1, getting hit by a Rakan W, and forcing Flash out. They shouldn't be walking up level 1 anyways against Zaya Rakan, but the fact that they walk up and don't maintain proper spacing, they're all clumped together, makes it so they both get hit with a W, meaning a summoner has to be blown right away at level 1. This is really scary, especially in pro play, because that summoner spell being on cooldown is 100% going to be communicated to the enemy jungler, which means Flutch's jungler, Lyra, is going to be able to easily camp bot lane if he wants. This means that UOL's bot lane has to play very, very safe and very close to their tower to make it so that Lyra doesn't actually end up camping that lane. Now, speaking of Lyra, he goes for a very interesting level one clear for going a leash from anybody. Typically, Echo isn't really a champion that you think of soloing their first buff he really needs a leash in order to get a good jungle clear early on into the game. This affects him pretty hugely. Ananachek, the jungler for UOL, is able to invade, taking Echo's blue away and forcing a vertical jungle to happen. He's able to do this because he knows that, first of all, jungle Echo isn't going to be able to clear quickly without a leash, and on top of that, he's not going to have the health in order to fight him. Both of his lanes also have priority, meaning there is no way Echo can possibly walk into his topside jungle to fight the Rek'Sai at the blue. The junglers end up trading blues, but Echo is unable to grab an additional camp after the blue, whereas Rek'Sai is. This puts Rek'Sai up in immediate EXP, whereas Echo's going to have a lead after the second clear of his camps. This never comes around though due to a mistake that Echo makes around 5 minutes and 50 seconds where he's unable to clear his raptors before resetting. When Rek'Sai invades revision on Lyra's bot side jungle, he sees the raptors are up, so he goes ahead and takes those, giving him a pretty respectable EXP lead. Because of the mistake that Lyra made earlier on his raptors, where he wasn't able to clear them, he has to walk further away from the raptors, delaying his base by a few seconds, which which makes a difference because he's a few seconds late to his red, so Rek'Sai gets to take that away from him for free. At this point, Rek'Sai's golden in EXP lead is huge on Echo. There really isn't all that much that Echo can do in order to get back into the game at this point. But Lyra doesn't take the time to get level 6 before forcing more fights to happen. And because of Huni's over-aggression, they force an early dive on the Nico before Lyra is able to get level 6. Because of this, Unicorns are able to easily clean up these two kills, putting a huge gold lead on their jungle and mid laners. Demonte is already playing a very hard matchup on a champion that he's not familiar with. Because of this, Demonte is already pretty far behind, but matters are made so much worse when Tristana gets that kill in the top lane. Now Demonte's down CS, he's down a kill, itemization for Tristana is cheaper, and he's unfamiliar with the matchup. If the game goes long enough, he's going to be able to make a comeback, but for the next 10-15 to 15 minutes, he's not really going to be able to do anything at all. If he were on a different champion, something that he's more comfortable on, or if he had a champion with more range and bully potential, then it might not be as big of an issue, but on Renekton, he's not going to be able to provide anything for his team. Another thing to take note of is that after the Unicorns clean up Huni and Lyra, Rek'Sai is easily able to invade the blue while Echo is dead, meaning he takes both second spawn of red and blue buff away from Echo. Ananachek has a two level lead on Lyra at this point, meaning he can force pretty much anything to happen with little to no consequences. 
Some skirmishing happens in the mid game and CG is able to get the Rift Herald. However, they use this Rift Herald to try and dive Nico yet again and fail yet again, both dying again in the process. I think you get my point here. CG should have learned from the first time they dove Nico that unicorns were going to be ready and they were going to respond to this dive and they were going to try their best to clean it up. There were much safer plays that could have been made, but Huni's over aggression ends up forcing so many plays to happen that end up putting CG so far behind. One of the reoccurring themes in this game is Lyra will just camp Huni's lane. He ganks over and over and over again and he never really gets anything beneficial from it. Lyra could have used his time so much better getting resources for the bot lane or the mid lane, but instead he dumps all of his resources into Huni, who has just been throwing the entire game long. Meanwhile, Unicorns is playing really well as a team, getting their carries ahead and responding to the strange aggression out of CG really well. By the time the second Drake is spawning, again, Unicorns are doing a fantastic job of playing as a team. Tristana bases in order to get her item and get to Dragon in time. Because of this, they're able to fight a full-on 5v5, wiping the majority of Clutch and transition that straight into a Baron. At this point, they're able to just use Baron to pressure the map and slowly choke out CG for the rest of the game. Due to the raw amount of mistakes that CG made in this game, and how well the Unicorns played their early and mid game, they were able to secure the win. No amount of miracle team fighting was able to save CG in this case, they just made too many mistakes to be able to make a comeback. If CG had drafted better or hadn't forced so many things on the top side of the map, maybe they would have been able to stage a comeback through raw mechanics. The way the game did end up playing out though, they're unable to stage a comeback again due to the raw amount of mistakes that they made in the early game and draft phase. Hopefully CG is able to learn from their mistakes in this game and hopefully we see more of the unicorns during Worlds because honestly, they're a very entertaining team to watch. If you haven't already, make sure to check out our website, gameleap.com. There we have hundreds of guides, all done by challenger players, sorted into a quick and easy to use course system. We have courses both on the five fundamental roles as well as champion specific courses so if that is something that interests you make sure to check it out using the link in the description below. I've looked at a lot of the stuff on there myself and I can honestly say it is all very high quality. Our website is one of the best learning tools out there to help you improve your play so if you're looking to grind the ladder towards the end of the season I would highly recommend signing up today. As always I'm Pam Panther. I hope you learned something valuable and I will see you in the next one.